is a talk inspired by work that got inspired by people that have problems with the old CSV approach. When I took over CSV XS, which is a module that is a state machine and parses CSV the right way, um, it already had an API. There is another talk about APIs later by someone else, which I will also uh, follow because I'd love to know more about APIs. And the API is object oriented. And CSV is seen by most people as a simple format. We just have to deal with this. But most CSV files are broken one way or another. Either they have too much spaces, or the wrong quotations, or bad separation characters, or whatever. CXV is XS is very good at catching all those. But new people, new people to grow, say it's too complicated to start with, and the documentation is 60 page long, and it's I want something simple that works. So um, who knows Promox? Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, a user of Promox, and she, in this case, said, my problem is that modules like TechCSV, etc. does it open? Yeah, okay, it's not. Most people are non-English there, so there's a lot of nice typos. Don't open files for me too. Right, if that's the major, that is one extra line, so that's not your problem. So I asked on and on and on, and she said later, I might use TechCXV is a wrapper around TechCXV XS or PP. So if you use this and TechCXV XS is installed, it will use XS. You know, everybody knows what XS is? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's a C, a C layer to the core, so it's much faster than pure Pro. Um, I might use TechCXV if it becomes a one liner. I joined uh, Promox back then to see what the problems, the open problems are to uh, the modules I have on CPAN, just to read about it. What, what are, how do people use it, why have they problems, what are the bugs they see as bugs. Which, so I started thinking about this and there's a, a huge discussion on uh, Promox somewhere where I say, well this is the problem, what are your opinions about my thoughts? This is the object-oriented way of CSV parsing and writing. Can everybody read it or should I make it bigger? Can you make it bigger? Um, better? Nice. <laughs> uh, hmm? Still not? Uh, you, open, you use the file, uh, you use the module, you open the file, uh, you can uh, add the column encoding, whatever. That's opening a file in Perl. You make a new object, and one of the things you have to do, uh, say, I accept binary, and something new about two years ago was out to DIAC. When do you expect problem, please put that on, because it will, the moment you hit an error, it will show you the error, and you don't have to say, well, it doesn't work, there it says why. Um, then you do a while loop and you get a line from the file handle you just open and you get a row with the fields. Most of the time this will work. If it doesn't, this auto deal will show you an error with there's an incorrect quote or an incorrect character or uh, you forgot that or that and you add another attribute here to fix that. But as this is always true for me, I, I, I use CSV access a lot, and the first things I add are those two. That's silly. That should have been in the default API. But I didn't write the default API, so everything I add later on should have the default it had 17 years ago. So it makes it harder for people to use it from scratch. You have to read and know why. For writing is to say you open a file, probably with column encoding, you have a new, where you say binary out of the app, and you have to specify an end of line. Why do you have to specify an end of line here and not there? If you don't specify one, it will be versatile. It recognizes all valid end of line sequences, like new line, carriage to a new line, or carriage return, like the old Mac state. So if you don't specify it, all valid new line separators are even mixed 
So if you one line with new and uh, a new line, new line, new line, new line, carriage it to a new line, carriage it to a new line, it will still be valid. Did you ever have any of those? Yes. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's one of the reasons I wrote it. Mm -hmm. um, so, for outputs you do want a new line character because you have to specify what... So, the, the most versatile is carries you to a new line, which is accepted everywhere. Uh, the defaults are just a comma and a double quote. Uh, then you prepare from uh, a, a database and this is mixing DBI. So, this is, uh, this is the shortest function to dump the database table into CSV. Please do uh, ask questions because I, I can skip, skip, skip and do it in three minutes. I've got 40, so I've got lots to show, but also time for ans uh, answers to questions. So you can uh, execute the prepare select star from foo, and while row is fetch row a regular f, which is default in the I calls, you do a print with the row and you're done. Very simple. Attributes, like I said, I had to add options, attributes for all the problems people came with. Like my have, uh, I want my empty strings to be quoted. Why? I want my empty strings to be quoted. No reason, okay, well, always quote means that even if it's not needed to quote a string, like if you have a foo, F-O-O, CSV does not say you have to quote it. There is another nice thing about always quote is that you can say that if it's undef you don't quote. So always quote will only quote if it's defined. And that means that if you have no characters in your database, you have comma comma in your CSV output. But if you have an empty string, you have to double quotes. So in reading back your CSV, you know what the difference is. So you can retain null characters, which is normally not supported in CSV. Quote null. So you can always quote, but you can also say quote null. And then you have no difference between the empty string and the null. But some applications that read CSV don't accept the empty field. Yes, another report where you say, well, that's valid CSV, but okay. Um, separation. I skip these, this is too normal. How to do that? Please use. You can also set it to 2. <laughs> so, 0, 1, or 2, and then it will die when it has a, an error. Mm. So, 1 will report, 2 will die. And if you have auto die on, then it will increase it with 1. So, if you have uh, auto die and you set it to 0, it will be 1. If you set it to 1, it will be 2 and it will die. Uh, allow loose quotes. It is possible that quotes are not correctly escaped. So we want to accept that. Well, all those things, this is for parsing data. Blank is undef, empty is undef. Like if I've got an empty string, like double quote, double quote, do I want it as an empty string or do I want it as an undef? There's a lot of, uh, never use that one. What, wait, 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 now I'm intrigued. <laughs> Read the documentation. This is one specific uh, error that occurs and there is no other way to, to, to skip that other than using this. This has to do with embedded carries your terms if the new line is the separation character, but it's... Well, yes, don't. <laughs> um, these two are wrong, in my opinion, the defaults. But they, those are the defaults to be uh, backward compatible. So what I want is only to skip those two. So this is not legal yet. This is just to demonstrate what I want. I want to skip that, and I want to skip that. Because if I write, this is my, my thinking process towards the one-liner I start with. So, what do I want to change to make the one-liners easy? First, skip what I always do, because those are same defaults. And for writing, the end of the line should be what everybody expects. So, simple. 
a lot easier to read. I don't have to read. What, what does it mean? Then I want, I don't want all that object-oriented stuff. I want one function that opens the file. And then uh, it, it returns an array of arrays, and I want to go for each my row over the array of arrays. And for the output, even more simple, CSV, output is test.csv, in is select all array ref. Wow! An array of arrays, which is already supported by the BBI. But for the, for the parsing, um, if you just read the whole file and it's a large file, you're going to be using a lot of memory. That was the next remark I wanted to make. This is Sorry. only suitable if all your data fits into memory. Or you can tie it. No, you can't. Ooh, ooh. You, you, you could then do that, but why would you if you then also could write the loop yourself, which is much faster? Why would you tie it? Yeah. And I, uh, when you parse, is there a reason that I can't give it a uh, a list of uh, field names so I can don't get an array of arrays, I get an array of hashes? You're too fast. It's not the next cheat, but almost. Sorry. <laughs> I was actually presenting my way of thinking towards this. So. The question asked was if the one-liner could take a file, so simplifying this into a file, which uses test, and writing is even more simple, out is test, and accepting an array of arrays. So, yes. Well, you can choose the function name to CSV from file, but the CSC, CSV file, then you don't have to have a reiterized. No. We've discussed that. Uh, I've, I've had a lot of discussion also in Amsterdam with, uh, with the promoters, and I'll show you why. <laughs> so, um, this is what it looks like. But now you can combine them, and I answer your question. Because the output of a CSV is an, a of a, uh, an array of arrays, and the input of an output is an array of arrays, I can combine them and I say the output is a new file, the input is the output of the CSV function. How, how does that answer it though? How is that? How does that answer it? If you change the name of the function from CSV and then give it file accepted. old CSV, you can change it to CSV file as the name of the command. Yeah. And then you have CSV file handle, you have CSV file, you have different functions, and then the parameter is a single parameter. It's just the file name or the file handle. In accepts everything. It automatically detects if it's a file or a file handle or a file uh, or a reference. The CSV returns just an array of arrays. It doesn't return no, a file handle. It, by default, it okay. returns an array of arrays, but it can also return an array of handles. So, so that means you can still do what I suggested. Yes. But you can do much more. <laughs> so, the in argument accepts a file name, a file handle, and since Perl 5, 8 something, it also accepts the glob itself instead of a back reference to the glob. So you can just pass star std out, so, or star std in. So, it really, the in is very versatile. So why do I need a CSV file? In accepts everything and recognizes it as such. And because it returns an array of arrays, you can pass it to the in of an out. And in also integrates with DBI. So if someone now asks me, how do I dump a table? This is the way to dump a table. How seriously fucking cool is that? Um, I'm halfway. Please interrupt more. Uh, this is how to convert a file with a semicolon separated uh, values to a file with columns, uh, comma separated values. So if you've got a Microsoft export with uh, uses semicolons, just use this and you've got a, a nicely, correctly formatted CSV file with commas that you can pass on anywhere. 
RFC 7111. Anybody heard of it? Uh, I have to make a uh, small list. It's, it's, a, it's a boring uh, sheet. Uh, who knows Rick? The current Perl port uh, pumpkin? He, he uh, tweeted me, well, huh? what's this? So I opened it and it was unifragment identifiers for the text CSV media type. I do CSV. So I read it. It's a long, long, long document. And it's not, it's, it starts, only the start is already uh, almost 100 lines, blah, blah, blah. And then you have an, instru an introduction. This is about sections of CSV file or a CSV data stream. And what's the blah, 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 blah. And what's important is that you can have, uh, this is an example of the input, and then you can have cell-based, like you want the stream, and you want cell is 4, 1, 2, 6, 2. Or you have row-based, uh, column-based, etc., etc. Well, that specification doesn't look too hard. Look at the date. This is very new. This is from uh, January 2014. And the tweet was on the 17th. So, I implemented this as CSV fragment. With an I.O. handle and a specification. And the specification can be just exactly how the RFC does it. I had even Twitter communication with them for what do you mean by that? Is it uniquely? There is still a discussion open. Because one of the things you can do is 4 minus star, which means column 4 till the end. I don't know how many columns there are, but I want to skip the first three. Or row 1 and uh, 1 till 2 and 4 and 6, uh, six till the end. I don't know how many there are. Uh, very powerful, very nice. What are some of the uh, remaining discussion points? The remaining discussion points is what happens if you do 1 dash 2 semicolon star semicolon star minus 4. I think it would be probably on top. No, 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 that makes total <laughs> no, sense. No, Everything uh, up to the last 4? Yeah. You know, no, you know uh, uh, the, the discussion is anything that cannot be uh, uniquely identified as being valid should be uh, ignored. Be ignored instead of erroring out? Yeah. Yes. And then the, would the outer DM find that like that as a problem and go like, hey, your specification is stupid? <laughs> Theoretically, my, I'm saying. Yeah. My, my module croaks with the message your uh, fragment is invalid, but okay. the RFC cell, you can return anything you want, even Zero. Right. So they're considering doing stuff like like star minus four, right? Like the star minus four, four is the, uh, is said to be invalid and croak. So but you won't be able to say I want from the first one till no the star no, four before can, the last. The first one is always one, so that's easy. Right, but if you don't know how many there are, but you know you don't want the last three. That's uh, not supported. Okay. You then you. Should. Then you can say, I want everything Yeah, but that's, for, that's not this RFC. This RFC is you know how big your data is and you want okay. that part. It would be very expensive to implement, because you, you could then say star minus 10,000. Implement that. For, uh, oh, for I, don't, I, I don't have the time probably. I've got um, I'm halfway, I'm halfway, halfway, halfway now. I don't have the time to go into that, but uh, I make the star dynamic. Yeah. So well, indeed. Using a, uh, a star with 10,000 can be very expensive in checking, but uh, if you uh, see the star and you implement it as a flag end of data, mm. horizontal or vertically, you don't have to check all the, all the records. Right. You just check all the, the, the known numbers in a, in a bitmap, and if you have a star, anything that is over that number is end of data. So what happens if you have 1 dash 2 semicolon 4 semicolon 7 minus uh, star semicolon 12? You just ignore the 12 because it's already in there. So uh, there are some optimizations. I won't show the code. This, this is, is 4 semicolon 4? Yeah. 
and it will just do, oh, it will not duplicate the, its a specification of what you want, not what goes out. That's the RFC, so it's a filter. Then the, feed, the feedback, I, I did a lot of Twitter, Twitter is a nice medium, if you know, don't know those people. <laughs> and I said, well, I have now implemented, look at the date, 21st of January, so it was only three yeah. days, four days later. <laughs> I have now implemented it in, in Perl, <laughs> module, we released for the winning. <laughs> uh, that was Wix, thanks for supporting, uh, awesome, sounds like uh, other languages needed too, and this is Pretty flipping cool, thanks again for this. So, uh, yeah, this is also uh, motivating people to use Pro because it's fast, it's easy, it's simple. Because yes. they implemented fast. Yeah, it, it, it was very easy oh, to do. Yeah. Relative. <laughs> well, combine them. Checker. That was also fast. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm missing a statement here. That's it. You can just say out in fragments. Uh, I think there's a HTML problem here because this is not legal. There's something in there. Mm. I can fix that. But, uh, you can just say out in fragment. So you have an in file with, uh, from a CSV file, a V file with fragment, and it outs there. So you can make with one call a an output fragment of an input. Callbacks. Um, yeah, I'm in time. Say you have a CSV file that has this. Maybe so. It's better. You have a CSV file with the workshops, uh, the date it starts, some identification number, and you have the the description and the city and the country. Optionally filled because you don't know where Prague is laid off you or it never uh, specified in the end date. And what you want is, I want an ID, and I want the date of start, and I want the event name, look, I've got also headers, and I want the city with in parents behind it, the country. This to show on the interwebs. <laughs> the old way. We have a new with the binary out of the FDN flight. Uh, we open the half, we print the new headers, while we get those lines, if row 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so I look at the country, country. if it's filled, I add that to row 3. It's not really appealing. But it works and it's yes, seven lines, so not hard to write, but this is what comes out. I've, uh, th this can also all be on one line, I've stretched it a bit. So, what I want is an array of arrays with an in of that file, and I've got callbacks now. Callbacks are new, those are only in there since 105. And I will release 106 is released, and 107 I will release today. When was 105 released? Hmm? When was 105 released? In January with the RFC second one. Wait, I don't know about it. Callbacks are, there are a uh, few callbacks. I will go through them. One of them is after parse. The moment I have parsed the line, with all the attributes like uh, allow quoting, allow stray escapes, whatever, I have a array of fields internally. I can do something with that with a callback. So after parse, the function that is called the callback have, has two arguments: the current CSV parser, which you can use, and the row reference. I can do the same here, row 4, and row 3 is unshift. That's mm. mean! This is from XS. So this is a Perl function I can call from within XS on the lowest level, just after parse, just before I return it to my 
four. And I do the same thing, and I have a record number. I don't, don't know if anybody's seen that, that's also relatively new. Uh, as CSV can have embedded new lines, Perl reads per line, but doesn't have to be the same record. So if there are new lines in there, there's two lines for one record. So CSV holds your record count. So I unshift, so I put in front of that row the record number. I fragment this with the first two columns and the four and five columns. So I skip this one and I skip that one. That's my fragment. So this in is all I want for need to do to read this file and convert it into the data I want without the headers. Now I do CSV, in is that array of arrays, out is star std out, no need to open a file or backslash it, That's, this is supported, and I want headers, these headers, and that comes out. Pretty intuitive, what? Is the fragment happening before the after pass callback? So no. during the reading, no, this, is, this is a hash, so you can also yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, does it do the fragmentation before it actually fires the after pass callback? No, because the after because parse is after parsing, and then comes the fragment. Okay. And that's documented. Otherwise, this for okay, but it returns. It returns. That does the after part actually return the row? Like. The question is a good question. So it parses because, because you put then it in, you, you, because you put a new item in the in at the beginning of dollar row, right? So mm -hmm. then you have a, then you have a new column, and if you fragment afterwards, and that's actually you're actually returning the row because if you don't return the row from the callback, then you are you actually you don't really have to put something in there because you're throwing it away. So you will have a new row, and your fragment then needs to take into account the new row. Yes. Uh, no, no, column, so sorry. this column, not row. This is, this fragment is on the modified data. Okay. So we put a comment there, maybe for the maintainer. Maybe. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. You probably don't even want to go that far because there's more. Are there any additional callbacks? Additional? Yes. Which ones? <laughs> Coming up. Uh, don't feed the trolls. Oh, uh, this is an extension on the, the callback dish. Um, what if you do a. This is what you get from a transaction logging system. You've got a transaction, a quantity, and a product. Well, that's having product 313 is not nice to present to someone. You want to make uh, an invoice. And the invoice should have a transaction ID, a quantity, the product, which is the black tin beer instead of product A3, and a price and a total price based on the number of products. So what you do is in the after parse you push. I, I, uh, skip the, the the first argument is the CSV and the second is the row. So dollar underscore one is the row, just to make it short. It doesn't read nice, but. I, I was thinking about using dollar A and dollar B for this. <laughs> no, because no, it's, so it's confusing. So uh, push, and this is from a module. Get desk and price for the quantity and the product, which I remove from the list, and I push the new things that can come from there, which are teddy bear price and total price. Which means that you can make callbacks in a module and use very complicated stuff and just use it in a callback. See, I just now also combined all of that into one CSV call that has it out, the headers with the headers there, the in file is a CSV call. So this is the reading with the callback and the out file brings us to stand up. Um, can you use stuff like add lines, not just add rows? Can you play with the lines themselves? Because I've worked with TSVs where they're too lazy to have several rows for IDs. They'll have one row that has ID, comma, ID, comma, as a value in the CSV itself. 
You mean add rows instead of columns? Like yeah, add rows instead of columns, or reduce rows. Like play with the. I rows understand what you mean. <laughs> uh, it's fucking nuts with these. Yeah, 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 it's it's. <laughs> it's Other question. It, the, yeah. header, <laughs> the headers skip. What are the values are there, and can you indicate the number of headers? Yeah, sometimes it's three lines or something. What if I want a header? You roll skip. What if I want a header that is? You skip what? <laughs> what? <laughs> can you have a callback for how how to decide the headers? Yes and no. Okay. This is the example for skip. So I don't want transaction. I want TID. Can you indicate how many lines there are to skip? No. Okay. It's it's either a skip, which is I don't care about what the original headers are, but there are headers and just ignore them. What do I should frame? Shouldn't it be a constant? What does it have? Uh, a CSV file, the first line, can have a, a title for the uh, column, yeah. okay. which is like, uh, this is yeah. presented as a spreadsheet, but it's like transaction, comma, quantity, comma, product, yeah. which is the first line, which is no data content, but... Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, I understand that, but the definition is only the first line. Only the yeah. first line, and you can skip it, ignoring it, and you can also say, but that's mm. probably the next wow. slide. Uh, I've got still five minutes. I need, I need to hurry now. So, but <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> that's what I want. What's I want? Uh, so you can use uh, this with uh, modules, which which empowers it. It can be better. Mm -hmm. I've got now the same. The purchase. Yes. Not CSV, which is my my uh, uh, input file. Headers auto. Which means that I don't return a array of arrays, but an array of hashes. Yeah. Mm. And every field has a name. Mm. So in the callback, the first argument is my CSV object, and the second argument is a hash reference. Mm. So in there, I give the hash reference to the other routine, and it can look at uh, hash ref arrow quantity and it can look at hash arrow product and it can just replace hash arrow product with the product description and add elements to the hash ref so I can just add the total price I can add the whatever I want to do so this one accepts a hash ref and it will do with the hash ref, whatever you want, you pay the best with So, CSV, I've got an input from a standard call with only two arguments. I've got a file name and headers is auto, so I, this means I want a hash. You can also uh, supply headers skip, which ignores it, and then you get an array of arrays. And you can also uh, pass an anonymous list of words in which you pass your own headers. On inputs. On the input. So if the input has no headers, but yeah. you want it to be to have headers, yes. and you want an array of hashes, that then you pass your question. <laughs> then you pass a anonymous list of titles or header names and it will uh, make it into a hash. So then this returns an array of hashes. The in detects that it's an array of hashes and at the moment you have a sub on in, which is a new callback at pro level. So after parsing, you, you can also uh, put the callback uh, after parse, which is the lowest level, just after parsing. Then it makes up your array of hashes or fields. And then it passes it, if you passed it, to on in, which means I'm done with the parsing, now I want to do a callback on that, on that row. If it's either hash or anonymous list. So you pass it the hash ref. Out is still standard out, and my new headers are those. And those headers are just entries in the hash ref. So they have to match. If this was transaction and you want transaction ID, you have to take care in this routine that transaction is replaced with TID. 
So if this entry is unknown, it will just pass here and live. More questions? Four minutes left. Yes. <laughs> so how would you use that, linking with what you were just saying, uh, to rename a column? To, to use a different header, uh, like you're saying TID, because you're using transaction in both. If you have, if you want TID here, yes. you can have this sub just say uh, dollar underscore uh, uh, bracket one bracket arrow TID is dollar underscore one bracket arrow transactions. So, you're so you just copy the key into the hash. Yeah. Yes. It's a hash ref, so you can yeah. do with it whatever you want. And this is at Perl level. This yeah. is not at X, X, at the access level. Yes, and then the, the, the second headers parameter would, would say the TID, which you yeah. just created. So you just okay. replace this with TID. Simple. Okay. Uh, what ideas do you have for uh, chunk processing? For chunk processing? Yeah. So not swapping the entire file, but going chunk. Use fragment. That will do that as well. Yes, because it only returns you uh, the chunk you want. So it, uh, it, the fragment still reads line by line and it skips everything that the fragment uh, excludes. Okay, so, so if you've got a, a huge file and you only want lines 10,455 till five lines later, you use the fragment and it skips the rest. So I'm very curious how it works under the hood because you still have to do parsing. I can't show that in two, two minutes. But if you, if you need to read files, it will read the file in memory first. Yes. No, it will read line by line. And if no error occurs, any line is added to a array of arrays. Okay. So yes, it will read the complete file into memory. Yes. But not first read the file. No, it reads line by line. So if you yeah, have an error, it reads until the error. And then you will end up with a lot of okay. Two other uh, uh, things that I didn't. Now there's two more callbacks. There's a callback on before print. That's also the lowest level. That at the, le the moment it outputs, just before that, you can do something with it, hmm. like altering the new line sequence or adding the, or uh, what you want, uh, saying the ID on the first line and put the rest on the next line. That's possible. There, and there is a new uh, callback which is not nice to talk about uh, here. I could just read the docs. That's on error. On error. Okay. Uh, the, the most questions I got in the last half year are, I've got that error and I want to ignore it. Yes, and, well, I got that error and I want to ignore it because I know there is an error and I want, just want to skip it and go on. What do you do about that error? You can, uh, that, uh, that's the, the, the countdown clock, so I can see how much time I have. Um, you can say a callbacks error and at the moment and the, the, the advantage of the error callback is that there is no slowdown at all because it's only invoked when there is an error. And what you get in the error is the line number, uh, the CSV object, the field number, the reason of the error. And you can say if my error is 2023, I know that I expect that error to just reset this error and go on. Mm -hmm. And that's all in the documentation. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.